just wanted to say the previous talk was a hard act to follow. They paid me to say that. <laughs> so um, I'm uh, Carlos Gastrin. I'm the CEO of GraphLab and also the professor in here in computer science. And we uh, funded the company about a year ago to try to make machine learning and data science available to everyone. And uh, this is an open source project that's been around for about six years. So what is machine learning? I love to think about this example from about 60 years ago. Uh, anybody know what this is? It's a camera, 20 by 20 pixels. So that's 0 0.4 megapixels. And he would show uh, pictures of triangles, squares, and cir circles. And he would learn to predict whether the image was a square, a triangle, or a circle, which is kind of exciting, by moving some motors in the back. Now, uh, the scales of data have changed significantly, be it the billion users in Facebook or the 100 hours of YouTube video uploaded every minute, which nobody watches. And it's become a buzzword, big data. And the New York Times had this interesting article from about uh, two years ago where it said, data is a new economic asset, like currency or gold, which is kind of funny because data is not an asset. It's what you do with the data. And so big data is about finding some signal in that data. But most of that data is really noise. And what machine learning tries to do is extract some noise away from this data so that there is more signal. Now, in addition to that, we focus on graph type data that allows us to bring in even more signal to make better predictions. So graphs are ubiquitous, be it in social media, in science, in advertising, and beyond, because they represent relationships between people, products they buy, things that interest them, and ideas they like. And today, the graphs that people use GraphLab for have hundreds of billions of vertices and edges. So they're really huge graphs. So machine learning is a really exciting new area. But as we talk to different companies thinking about using machine learning, they tell us about three core challenges. First, even the basics of machine learning are hard to grasp. They're in these really thick books full of equations that nobody can really follow, which is kind of hard. And if you hire somebody, they come in and say, oh, where's my R console? And hopefully, six months later, some of that code goes into production, which is a real problem. And beyond that, the state-of-the-art machine learning algorithms are trapped in papers that people like me write and nobody reads. And so the problem here is how to make these ideas accessible to a wider range of people. And this is what Graph is, Lab is really about. So just to give you an example of what you can do, in your laptop, you can program in Python and get highly scalable code that can process hundreds of millions of uh, data points directly from your laptop. And just by changing one line of code on top, your code runs directly in the cloud. No changes, which is pretty exciting. And just to give you an example of the performance that we get, GraphLab is the benchmark system that everybody needs to compare to in all systems out there. So just to give you a sense of why, if you take the Twitter graph from 2010 and you run a standard benchmark task called triangle counting, which is important for advertising, it's uh, important to find people that are part of very tight communities. If you try to use Hadoop, which is a standard system for uh, data processing, with about 1,000 machines, it takes you about 400 minutes. With GraphLab, with 64 machines, it takes about 15 seconds. So in addition to this, you can interact and share your information with others. We are uh, keen on something called IPython notebooks. Anybody know what an IPython notebook is? Woohoo! This is a combination of two things that I love. Python, a programming language, a scripting language, really easy to use. And wiki pages, ways to communicate ideas with your friends and uh, people you want to share with. So you can embed information through text and, uh, and code in the same place. And you can do really interesting analysis. So one of the people in our team this is, did this analysis around the six degrees of Kevin Bacon game. Folks familiar with that game? Yeah, yeah. This is how far each person is from Kevin Bacon. So how many movies they're away. So did this analysis that allows you to interact with from a wiki page, be able to analyze how far each actor is from Kevin Bacon. But most interestingly, it allows you to ask, who is the real Kevin Bacon? In other words, if Kevin Bacon is supposed to be the most central figure in all of movies, who is really the most central figure? Anybody want to take a guess? No? I'll give you a little hint. I'm a Latino guy, and I'm proud that there's a Latino guy here. It's Danny Trejo. 
He is the real Kevin Bacon. So GraphLab is an open source project. It's been around for about six years. Our users grab, brag about us. We have a tight open source community. Our last uh, workshop last year had about 600 people there. Uh, the next one this summer in uh, San Francisco, we're expecting around 900 people. If you listen to music on Pandora, anybody listen to music on Pandora today? Those recommendations used GraphLab underneath. But we're also a, um, a startup company from about uh, one year old with about 20 amazing people who are really focused on making this technology available to anyone who wants to be creative with their data. So if you're excited about data and you want to unleash data science, Try out GraphLab. Thank you. Oh, yeah. We have room for about uh, three minutes of questions. Yes. So the question was, do we support supervised and unsupervised learning methods? And the answer is yes. Um, we do the standard supervised methods like classification and regression, as well as different clustering methods, text analysis methods like topic modeling and LDA as well as recommender systems, which are one of the biggest applications of GraphLab today. Do you have tools that make it easier to create and parse your files? The answer is yes. We have something called S-frames, which are highly scalable data frames, where at about twice the time it takes to do word count on, uh, on your laptop, you can process 100 million lines of code with your own arbitrary lambda, Python lambda, out of core. It's pretty hot stuff. Yes. The question is, do we have tools for somebody who doesn't know machine learning or algorithms to get started? And the answer is yes. I mentioned the six degrees of Kevin Bacon as a way to um, analyze data. But underneath of it, there's an IPython notebook, which is a wiki page that explains to do this analysis, this is what we did, and this is the Python code to do it. And if you read that page, you can do what everybody does when they code. Start with somebody else's code, download it, add it, and modify it to so solve your own problem. So this is how you get started. We have a wide range of applications already written in GraphLab by us and others. Yes? Uh, do we have, well, the, the core of GraphLab is written in C++. Um, the wrapper is in Python, or you can write C++ if you want. There's other wrappers that other people have written with Java and other things. Um, we have plans. Depends on what you're interested in. Find me afterwards if you have a suggestion of what languages make sense to you. Yes? Um, at the core, what is the algorithm that we did? So I'll tell you the story in a little different way. Uh, about six years ago, I uh, was a professor at Carnegie Mellon at the time, and my students and I were proving some theorems about large-scale machine learning. We tried to implement them on Hadoop. It was really slow. We tried to implement them in uh, something called MPI, which is high-performance uh, computing library. It was really a pain in the butt. And so we decided to write this little system so we could write more papers more quickly. We called it GraphLab. <laughs> We put out in the open source community, and now you know what happened. So the underlying system, the core technology, is a new way to do data partitioning in the cloud, optimize communication, and optimize where computation goes. And this is what makes the huge difference. Uh, we do matrix and graph computations, yeah. Final question? No question. That was good. Ladies and gentlemen, Graph Lab! <laughs>